The stage is finally set for the championships in, in, in intramural basketball. Three semifinal games took place in UHI's gym last night to see which teams would be playing for it all tonight in the PMAC. Let's take you to the highlights. The first game of the evening, your mom taking on the bullets. Not quite a bullet theirs, but thank goodness her teammate had the putback. Your mom coming down in the other end of the court. Lauren Simmons decides to take it herself from outside the lane for the nice little two-pointer. Then as the bullets come back to the other end of the court, they have a nice shot of their own from the outside. But your mom would look to fight back again. They dump it off to Lauren again, who takes it in from her sweet spot for her second shot. And your mom would go to win 28 to 25. Our second game of the night, Los Pandieros versus the Coop again. Los Pandieros starts out here, gets the tip, wastes no time as they get to the basket and score two points quickly. The Cooper try and come back. They use a more teamwork approach to their basketball game. They pass it inside, then back outside, and knock down the three. Boy, Los Pandieros, what you can do, watch me, watch I can do it. Knock down the three-point basket here, they would go up here. And then they show you that they can not only score offensively, but they can take the ball away from the other team. This leaves a fast break. The Coop gave up too many of these easy baskets in this game. They would go on the fall to Los Pandieros, 50 to 46. And in the final game of the night, Kappa Sigma A defeats Sigma Nu A 50-42 to, to become champions of the Frat League and move on to the all-campus final. As we mentioned, all championship games will be played tonight in the PMAC. And the women's final is the hot shots against your mom at 7. Then at 8 comes the Co-Rex final dance. Co-Rex flag football champions Dunkin' Donuts will try to make it two in a real titles in a row when they take on the Honeybees. And in what may be the most watched and anticipated games of the night, the men's all all-campus championship will tip off at 9 o'clock. Los Pandieros from the men's bracket and Kappa Sigma A from the frat league will face off for a year's worth of bragging rights. It's time for our first commercial break, but coming, com but coming up in the forum, we're breaking down all the men's SEC tournament action. And later, we'll have everything going on this weekend in LSU sports. Stay tuned, you're watching Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. I'm now joined in the forum by Sports Showtime reporters Mark Talley and Hunter Hall to discuss the men's basketball SEC tournament. Welcome to the show today, guys. Glad to be here. Thanks. All right, well, the men are the number one seed in the SEC tournament, but they are coming off of two straight losses. Now, tomorrow they'll face up against Kentucky, who just beat Ole Miss in the first round. But, Hunter, tell me, how do you see Trent Johnson's team faring in the tournament? Well, Mary Clay, like you said, they're coming off two straight losses, and they've fallen in the rankings, and people are starting to lose faith. After the season they've had, I don't think the seniors want to go down in flames. They want this more than anything. I think Trent Johnson knows what he has to do to get this team ready to play. These Tigers are going to come out firing Friday afternoon. They'll make it to at least the semis, but can definitely win it all if they play like they've been playing. Hunter, I'm going to agree with you, but for a different reason. After building on a 13-game conference winning streak, the weight of running the table has been lifted from the Tigers after last week's two losses. While I never condone a loss, this will give the Tigers a renewed energy and focus heading into the conference tournament. What do Alabama, Vanderbilt, and Auburn have in common? All three beat LSU in the regular season, and all three are on the opposite side of the bracket. If I'm Trent Johnson, I'm telling my guys, I want to avenge one of these losses, and the only way to do so is to make it to the championship game. The Tigers have answered every other challenge put to them by their first-year coach, and I don't see how this will be any different. The Tigers will win the SEC tournament. All right, Mark, well, I like that confidence, but let's look a little bit further into the future. Now, at this point, the Tigers are projected as the, number, the sixth seed in the NCAA tournament. So, Mark, how do you see this SEC tournament affecting their NCAA seeding? Well, Mary Claire, despite the advantages of winning the SEC tournament that could, could, be, could bring to LSU, as far as seeding goes, the Tigers are just trying to show the selection committee that they can still be a significant presence in this NCAA tournament. At this point, whether the Tigers are four, five, or six seed, there's no... It's not, major, not of major significance, but LSU needs to get into a favorable bracket. Right now, they are slotted into the same bracket as Oklahoma and North Carolina, and that spells doom for LSU. A more favorable bracket would put them in with Louisville and Kansas, considering both teams' lack of big men. Well, Mark, it's obvious if they win the tournament, they'll get a higher seed. But the real question is if they don't win, and if they play like they did the last two games, they won't win. How bad will the NCAA selection committee punish them? If they get to the finals, their seed shouldn't change. However, if they stumble in either of their first two games, the Tigers could end up with an 8 or 9 seed, possibly a 10 seed. But like I said, these seniors aren't going down in flames, not after the season they've had already. Well, for any team to be successful in the postseason, they must be functioning like a well-oiled machine. So, Hunter, tell me, who is your metaphoric squeaky wheel for the Tigers right now? Well, for me, it's got to be Garrett Temple. I love this kid. He's got it. I just wish he would play like it. He's had a down season, averaging only seven points per game. This kid has been here before, though. 
Temple was a starter in 2006 as a freshman when Tyrus Thomas and Big Baby led LSU to the Final Four. If anyone needs to step it up, it's this guy. He knows how this pressure feels, especially on the young guys. Marcus and Tasman are going to be ready, but if Temple can step up and play like the Garrett Temple we know, this postseason is going to be a successful one for the Tigers. Yeah, well, Hunter, you've got the right position, but it's the other guard for LSU that has to step up big. The man of the hour for LSU is point guard Bo Spencer. Since returning to full strength from his shoulder injury earlier in the season, Spencer has become the point guard LSU's needed for the past 10 years. However, with the good comes the bad, and Spencer's absence from the lineup leaves the Tigers' offense struggling to score. LSU can't afford to play Spencer 40 minutes every game because he's got to be fresh for the back-to-back -back games that will hopefully face the Tigers in the tournament. Therefore, while in the game, Spencer must be as productive as possible, avoiding some of those turnovers and bad shots that the sophomore has been at times prone to do. All right, guys, we have a little bit more time on our hands, so time to run the triangle offense. First of all, Tasman Mitchell, staying or going pro? Hey, he's got to stay. Tasman doesn't project well to the NBA. He needs to come back and work on his perimeter game. I think he has to stay. He has to prove himself. He, nobody knows about Tasman Mitchell yet. Okay, well, if you could put one player from 2006 on this team, Glenn Davis, Tyrus Thomas, or Daryl Mitchell, which one would it be? Uh, Tyrus Thomas. If this team had a freak athlete like Tyrus Thomas, they'd be unstoppable. Well, Mitchell, Mitchell was the leader. Thomas was jumping through the roof, but Mitchell was the one leading this offense up and down the court at all times. Okay, well, last one here real quick. Still SEC champions with John Brady as the coach? No. Yes or no? no. Yes. No. Are you kidding There's me? no way. How did those Are players get here? His first season, he won the SEC championship. Those players came here because of him, but uh, uh, okay. Trent Johnson is going to keep him here, and he's going to lead this team. L LSU's been to how many Final Four since, he, since I ever? Two, three. Right. John Brady has one of those. Right. So he's got so a third so of your Final Fours, one. and you just want to kick him right, guys. It's only one. Let's calm down Look here. Look what he did. Look what he did. Nothing. He won one Obviously, SEC we have title. some dissension in the studio, but we are going to have to wrap it up. Thanks, as always. Very enthusiastic today. Love to see you guys out here. All right. Well, it's time for another commercial break, but when we come back, Hobie will be in the studio with your weekend preview. Stay tuned. You're watching Sports Showtime.